Hey guys, my name is Simpsy, how you all doing? Welcome back to some more Napoleon Total War Darth Mod here today on the channel. We're back with episode 11 of my United Kingdom Let's Play. Here today we have the Battle of Toulouse, and well, it's just not any Battle of Toulouse. Napoleon, Emperor of France, is for some reason hanging on in there. Alexander Abercrombie is here, along with Robert. Um, not the best, not the elite, not the world class of, I don't know, France's finest infantry are in there. I would think, I, I thought, I envisioned when I was fighting Napoleon this year is he would be coming in with a full stack of the, the best of what the Grand Armée has to offer. But he's actually hiding in Toulouse for whatever reason. Maybe because his generals are failing on the Eastern Front. They do have Prague and, and some southern Germanic territories, but most of it has been split down the middle with sort of West Germany falling under Prussian occupation. We're putting some real pressure on the French here and we should be able to take all their core territories if we're successful here today. Alright, we're on the battlefield. So, Napoleon is deploying his, I don't know, stupid balloon looking thing. But, this is it. We should be able to eliminate him for the first time. At least he's going to be convalescing. I don't know where to because Paris is firmly under our control. So, we've pushed in sort of a two-pronged attack. We've pushed over the Pyrenees. And we've got most of our armies in the north in Paris with Wellington. But there he is. Napoleon Bonaparte himself battling him for the first time. It's cool that he's got a unique model. I don't think Wellesley has um, in Napoleon. But anyway, let's push on up and take Toulouse. So, not too bad of a battlefield. They've sort of intertwined their infantry there, which is annoying. So we're going to have to march on up. There seems to be a little bit of flat terrain. And we'll try and match it with theirs. We have artillery supremacy. Along with cavalry, you would imagine. But there are a couple decent units here and there. Nothing too crazy. But enough to cause us some problems. Especially with Napoleon himself. A fantastically starred commander. So let's advance on up. And once we take Napoleon out... Um, we can't actually fully get rid of him in this campaign. Because faction leaders in Napoleon are... Well, essentially the faction leaders are immortal. Wellesley and Napoleon being like... It, like, is... Um, Wellington the faction leader, I guess. He's, a fa he's like the main general. I think you can make a claim that the Prime Minister or George III is. But there's his <laughs> hot air balloon floating back there. He's not hanging up on in that. It does look like the French are trying to match us here. But we're going to be able to make a strong long front line and probably keep it quite simple and safe over there. Okay, so then we've got to deal with Marseille. That's a part of our victory conditions. Brittany, and yeah, once we pretty much beat the French into submission, send him to his island home, Napoleon, we're going to march upon the Danes and take Denmark. I, I get taking Hanover, but why do we need to take Denmark? I don't know. Maybe to sort of control all the vital shipping lanes. Because we've got Gibraltar. And if we take Denmark, we basically control most of the eastern sea of the map, I guess. Like, the eastern seaboard. Alright, so we've got my cavalry flanking well. They've moved some of their infantry into a precarious position. But they're starting to form up against us, which is interesting. They're starting to actually match us. My artillery isn't in position just yet, so they can't start shelling the French. But the revolutionaries that rose up against us... In Paris, probably had a bigger, better army, the one that spawned. But yeah, where is Bernadotte? Where is the Iron Marshal? Maybe they've been killed in the east. <laughs> I just wish there were some more events and notifications, so I'd know what's sort of going on. Because you can see the you can see the terrain trading, and you can just imagine the uh, the crazy wars that were going on over in. Germany. Like, how many soldiers were killed? But hey, there's no way to really know. And this is a really old game. When you think about it, it must be 10 years old now. Okay, 
So, my cavalry is doing okay. We're losing a... <laughs> it's a tricky amount we're losing. But we're putting pressure on their infantry, which is fine. My artillery is still yet to go into position. But once we start shelling the French, they actually might want to go and make an advance. Okay. Yeah, we're just trying to cycle charge them. Because I've noticed this. They must have some sort of buff. The infantry, because the French can really hold their own. Their infantry. Exactly. My god, my ears. They're screaming because they're in a retreat. <laughs> of the 4th British Light Dragoon. Is doing okay. Okay, my cannons are now in range. Let's start shelling these French tards. Okay, let's move up. They're sending some cavalry to react. Where is Napoleon? Where is he? Okay. Oh yeah, I guess he was just caught. Maybe, maybe, hmm. Actually, now thinking about it, I didn't check. Is Toulouse the capital? Because he might have gotten, he might have lost a battle in the Far East and then was sent back here and he can't convalesce at Paris. Maybe that was it. You've got to be careful here on the left flank. Might need to form up into a square if we need to, but we seem to be hitting them quite well. We've got cavalry nearby, so if they do charge, we a couple of decent volleys. They're going to swing around. I can't tell what they're doing. Are they retreating? <laughs> I think they've just been phased out, so it's no worries. <laughs> Alright, let's put more of this cavalry on the right hand flank to work. They have some cow troops there, which we will have to watch and intertwine with. But we should be alright. Yeah, that cavalry unit is just gone. <laughs> just y tried to YOLO on out. Okay. They're forming up. Um, is it... Yeah, it's probably just move my cavalry here. It's probably not a, a bad idea maybe to move up my front line eventually. Oh, we just... Oh, no, we're... Okay, I was going to say, we're out of range on some of those artillery pieces. But not all of them. We've still got our cavalry to play, so we might as well just try and soften up as much of this infantry if we can. It'll just make our own British Redcoats be a little bit more easier when they push on in. That's an okay charge. That's actually a very good charge. Yeah, but they instantly recover. I don't know why that is. They look like they were wavering and went to half strength, but they managed to pull back a bit. Oh, no. That's what I'd like to see. Come on. Come on. Okay, now pull back because they're firing upon us. Oh. Yeah. So, after my artillery started shelling them, they actually made the decision to push up. Which is interesting. We'll have a crack at this unit now, once this cavalry gets a little bit of air back. Gotta watch out for that cow trop. There's one just below us there. But another decent shot. That's a bit of high ground there. We might be able to send some of these guys flying back, maybe. Ah, oh, one or two. <laughs> that guy fell through the earth, I think. Fell right to hell from Toulouse. <laughs> Quite a godless city, Toulouse. I could imagine the British saying that. Anyway, Napoleon's is still hanging back here. We might actually be able to flank some cavalry around and maybe try and go for him. He's hanging in one of his own cow troops. Which is an interesting play. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. So, say so seven or so infantry are going to commit. Let's try and lull them into a bit of a false sense of security. And then we'll angle on the flanks just to open up the angles. Yeah, we've got a lot of line here. Just like not doing anything. So we'll angle and make that a bit better. Because there's no way their French infantry on the f on their right flank on their right flank is going to wrap all around my left flank, essentially. All right, fall back up there. Continue to cycle charge. Oh, but we're starting to trade. Oh, and they're actually taking a bit of 
damage as well. My center is not doing well against the French Grenadiers of the Grand Armée. To be fair, this is... It's an okay army, this one. No, uh, actually, I should be... Uh, I say okay. I probably should be giving them more credit. Because they are the conquerors of Spain and Iberia, aren't they? They are battle-hardened against the Spanish. Which, to be fair, the, the Spanish fighting man is nowhere near as good as the, um... The French. <laughs> Units and stats-wise in this series, from what I've noticed. But, um... Gotta be careful with saying that sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm role playing, just chill. But yeah, um, I I reckon stats wise, morale, we had a harder time fighting the Dutch and the French in the north. I would imagine that Wellesley's army is more battle hardened, well drilled, and probably has better quality units and experienced units than these ones that fought in Spain. To be honest, but. Yeah, I kind of wish, like, if your units got experience for fighting in terrain, like, obviously the mountainous and hills of terrain, those units would be better than fighting in the sort of lowland, flooded fields of Brussels and, and sort of and Bruges and stuff, you know what I mean? Glorious victories, huh? Like, Wells's army probably would be better in the swamp in the mud than the Spanish, you'd imagine. Okay, so we're starting to surround them, which is definitely the play, but I'm not going to lie, my infantry is taking an absolute battering musket-wise compared to them. We're only, we are just holding, like, in a straight-out shootout. I don't know if we're going to win with that artillery and cavalry flanking. Yeah, look at this, the French infantry is doing tremendous works against me. Wow, wait, crikey, I'm, okay. Okay, some of them are routing now because we're just dropping artillery truth bombs on them. They're charged on here. Let's flank around the left. Let's open up some more angles. Oh, the polian has been wounded now, though. That's good for us. We'll send him on back for a couple turns. But our first major battle with Napoleon is probably going to end with a British victory. But a pretty decent losses. This will slow the advance on the crucial French port city of Marseille. Which they're still relying on most of their supplies coming from. And, and aiding their territories on the German front. Okay, now it's swung back to about a 95% in my favour. So, I feel comfortable enough now for our red coat infantry to advance and push on. Yeah. That's it. They're in a full retreat now. Yeah, I think I had a harder battle against those revolutionaries that were spawned on in. I just find it funny that an AI spawned army was tougher than some of the French resistance here. Okay, they've managed to recover a bit, so we do have to be careful. Oh, along with these cow troops as well. They've land mined them around, which is annoying. Just gripped up my cavalry here. Now they're form square. Okay, we're not going to be able to get past that. Pull back, pull back. Even when they form square in such a tiny formation like that, still does so much damage. We'll give chase with the infantry. We need them to come up and help. My cavalry are actually struggling. Just because of these cow troops and then they're f forming square. Oh, we got some reinforcements arriving. That's cool. Even then, we don't necessarily need them. Alright, continue to fire against them. Come on. Three on one. <laughs> I was going to say, we didn't even get to really volley at them. Oh, that's it. Alright. Let's hear that one there. Close victory. Maybe because of, I don't know, Napoleon sort of being on in it. Anyway, pretty decent victory there with Alexander Abercrombie. Yeah, so they did have some experience in Spain, but it wasn't the main Spanish army. Eh? But anyway, Toulouse is now firmly under British control, which is fantastic. Okay, so I guess we'll send some reinforcements to Brittany 
Uh, we do have to take Normandy as well, and we will need to send some units over to Marseille. I think that's sort of the natural progression. Oh, so it's in the turn to continue. So it looks like the French are going to react, and they're probably going to take... I mean, yeah, they're going to take Paris, which is rather annoying. We have to take that back. It's just because we were dealing... We had to push south with Wellington to deal with those that rebellion that popped up. And we pushed into Champagne as well. We will have to keep an eye eye on the... Sort of the Maginot Line area. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. So, unfortunately, we lost Paris. But we will be able to retake it, I hope, with ease. Okay, so we have a full stack here in Bordeaux. So, we'll move this unit in because it looks cool. We've still got those Highlanders that are still kicking it. So I guess we'll try and push for... Uh, I guess we'll push between Ren. I'll, I'll push towards Paris. We'll try to get to Paris. But we'll sort of sit in between Brittany because we might be better off to attack there. Okay, what about with you guys? Um, maybe throwing everyone at Paris and just securing the north is probably the play. They don't seem to have too many units down here. Like, Toulouse doesn't matter overly too much. The only reason we have so many units there was just to deal with and, and get rid of Napoleon Bonaparte. So we'll try and descend upon Paris. Okay. So, one, two, three. We should have four, five full stacks actually in the same theatre for the first time with Wellington. So we'll move you on in. Oh, Napoleon's back in there, I think. Is that where he's convalesced, maybe? All right. Let's move everyone up. And let's retake Paris. We'll move you on in. Just to make this army a little bit nicer. Perfect. Right. And we've got some more additional reinforcements as well. We'll try and bring them down on in. Uh, I guess we'll move this army up to Paris. And we might be able to move it. No, we're not going to be able to reach it, which is annoying. But anyway, 4 verse 1. Should be able to win this one. We fought against Napoleon already. And we'll be able to bring him down again. We've already played the Battle of Paris and against him. I would have liked to play that one if we didn't have to deal with Napoleon at the start of the video. Like I say, so Paris has been retaken. <laughs> which is rather annoying that we had to go do that. So, we sent one army to go deal and take Brittany. We'll send this army to take Normandy. And we've nearly then got most of... France fully under our control. We will need more reinforcements there. Crikey, that's a tough order to resolve. Victory. Now with those reinforcements, we're fine. So Normandy's fully under our control. Perfect. Okay, we'll move you back to Paris. Because we're going to have to go sort of towards... Uh, what is it? Strasbourg, I think it's what it's called. I can't remember. Anyway, we need to push eastward. Eventually. Alright, back down in Brittany. We'll be able to take it now at the top of the turn. Because we've got movement points. And then we just need Marseille. And yeah, so we need four more key settlements for our victory conditions. And then once we take Brittany, it will be whittled down onto three. I could liberate Brittany, but I can't afford to lose it. So I'm not going to do it. Supporting our allies. Oh, right. That's because of our ethnic slash cultural ties to this region. Oh, cool. There's a little bit of historical lore there, I guess. Okay, so Switzerland's back by the look of it. Oh, Austria is actually pushing into Ligeria. Um, it's annoying that Prussia has Hanover, because I need that. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. We're going to move the French... Uh, move our fleet out for a sec. Because we've got to deal with the French that have attacked our Scottish port. I guess that's the port of Glasgow. I don't know exactly. But they're blocking me here, which is uh, affecting our trade quite substantially. So although that France has fallen, they've adopted a pirate um, tactic, I guess. Ah, uh, the French want peace. I can imagine that. Um, I'm not going to accept because we have them on the back foot massively. We're going to continue to push and put the pressure on them. Uh, another rebellion in France. 
Hopefully this time around it's nowhere near as annoying. It's just because we've traded the territory for, so far back and forth. Oh my god. More communists, more commies. Oh my god, this is more than the last time. I wonder if it's a scalable thing. I don't know. That's two and a half stacks. That's super annoying that we have to go deal with that. Well, at least we're on the way as we sort of push east. I don't believe that. Why are they spawning so many? It's just got to do with this difficulty, I imagine. My god, look how harsh that is. Yeah, they shouldn't be... Sp like, I can get, like, a full stack of, like, cr crap units. But, like, three full stacks, nearly, of some of the best that France can spawn. Yeah, a little bit harsh. Maybe if they were, like, had the French flag and stuff. Like, what happens if they take territory? I guess they, they just give it back to the French. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Maybe it's to simulate the British conquering this territory. God, this is nearly as hard, harsh as sort of Hearts of Iron Rebellion. Sometimes they can grow quite a bit. Alright, anyway. We'll push back to Paris and repair. Uh, they've actually attacked me here in Paris. Oh, wow. We're actually not favoured to win that one. Oh, my God. They are really going for us. Headstrong here. My God. Wellington's army is so weak. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. We've got an army here on the Marseille border, so we should be able to push over and take it. We will bring more additional reinforcements down if we can. Looks like the Austrians are actually thrown back there. Uh, the French have actually made a pretty big fleet here. Actually, you know what? What I'll do, after we win this, I'll send a unit to... Because this is always a good trick. I'll send a unit to get the fleet out, because that will knock them out now that we regain control of the port. We should be able to have... Yeah, we've got enough strength with Nelson. Nelson's got a full stack, a full fleet, rather, now protecting Gibraltar. We've got the money, and he's got HMS Victory and... A couple of others to help out. They have now fled back. They can't actually get into the port. Because <laughs> Austria now holds it. And that should be probably the last of the French fleet, you would imagine. But now Marseille is fully under our control. And you'd think that French, even semi-control of the seas is now kaput. But they still have a couple more territories in the east which we need to grab. Um to really sort of beat them into submission. But we basically want to try and take this French territory and then sort of make our way up north. We want to try and take Hanover. All right, still continue to push against the French. I have no ambition of really holding Italian territory. Um, Sending Austria has Milan and stuff. I could pop at them. I'd be open to do that. Yeah, so Strasbourg, whatever. I was going to say, the Maginot is a bit further down. But Wellington can push up. And then there's no more French territory northwise. The Prussians have gone in and taken it. Which is really annoying, because we're going to have to figure out how to get it off the Prussians, that territory. I don't want to go to war with them. But if there's no other alternative, we might have to. But I feel like the Germans, the Germanic factions, Austria, Prussia, and some of the states that have been defying Napoleon are my allies. I have no ambition there. No, they do have Prague still. So maybe we need to give some territory back and forth. Okay, so we'll push into Ligeria now. And we'll try and liberate the Italians, I guess. Because, yeah, we're sort of naturally pushing this way anyway. Yeah, so the Napoleon seems to be the only other general they have left. Maybe most of his marshals got smashed in the east. Okay, so, yeah, we can liberate the Italians here. I'm actually tempted to do so. Oh, they're actually just, like, full-on Italians. They're not, like, um, sort of Ligarian ones. Um, yeah, so they're, pro they're a protectorate. Let's make a trade agreement with them. That'd be cool. Our first protectorate. Also give us a bit of a buffer zone with the Austrians, if need be. So, we've brought back the uh, Italian states. Alright, well, that's pretty much it for the French. Switzerland's now back. What do they even have? Okay, they have Corsica. 
which probably like Alba is you can't see the island from here, so I guess that's what they have. I'm um, nearly determined to make peace with the French. Uh, they do have Bavaria, Munich, and Prague, but yeah, <laughs> Napoleon, for all intensive purposes, has been exiled to Corsica in this playthrough, because you'd imagine that the Austrians and the Prussians are probably going to take that quite quickly. We still have to take Hanover and Denmark, and we'll do that at the start of the next episode, and episode 12 coming out, and then we'll probably about hit our victory conditions, I think. Anyway, thank you very much for watching episode 11. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've managed to take the entirety of the French mainland under our control, which is fantastic, and we'll be able to wrap up maybe the campaign, if we're lucky, in episode 12. We'll just have to see. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. I'm going to play the outro now. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. But thanks guys, my name has been Simsy, much love from Australia, goodbye.